Back here on CBS Sports HQ, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. We have a classic NFC North showdown on CBS on your turkey day. It is the Bears and Lions going face to face. Lions double digit favorites in this matchup, sitting at 10 and 1 against a Bears team that had a lot of high expectations going into this season. But if the uh, season ended right now, they would be sitting outside of the playoff picture. All right, we are here on set with Danny Cannell and Brian McFadden to talk about this matchup on CBS on Thanksgiving. We have the Bears, we have the Lions, and this Lions team sitting at, at 10 and 1 here. They're tied for the best record in the league, so there's obviously a lot of comparison with them in the Chiefs. Uh, their wins are a little prettier than yep. the Chiefs' wins that we've been seeing. Very true. Um, based off of what we've seen right now, although they don't have a guy named Patrick Mahomes, BMAC, how comfortable are you with this team when it comes to the postseason? I know we'll, we'll see it when we see it, but up until this point, um, sitting at 10 and 1, the way Jared Goff has been playing, the backfield, all of that. I'm very, very comfortable with the Detroit Lions in terms of postseason success okay. because of the environment in which they will be involved in in the postseason. Teams in the NFC, we know about the Philadelphia Eagles. They are looking really, really good, dominant. Saquon Barkley has been a exciting for their team. But outside of the Philadelphia Eagles, there's not a lot of teams in the NFC that you really trust and believe could go to Detroit and pose to be a significant threat. There lies the luxury for the Detroit Lions. When you look at their style of play, it's been tough for any opposing team to be able to contain for four quarters. When you look at Dan Campbell, he was the issue for me a year ago and why they did not get a chance to go to the Super Bowl. The aggressive style in which he coached with. Yes, that's his that's his, his, his mindset as a coach. But at some point in time, you got to take your foot off the gas. You know what I mean? And slow it down a little bit. Remember, he kept going for it on fourth down opportunities in the NFC Championship game against the San Francisco 49ers. They did not convert. That led to the window of opportunity for San Francisco to jump back into that ball game and win it. We're still seeing an aggressive mindset, but he's, know, he, he's knowing when to settle and take field goals, which is important. So I like their chances in the playoffs. Anything can change between now and postseason time in the NFC, but outside of that, it's not a deep pool of talented teams in terms of NFC teams outside of Philly that could really compete with the Lions. They're a Super Bowl favorite for a reason. They have been phenomenal. They've had style points. They've been dominant. They've shown they can win different ways, right? They've got this incredible running back duo, who I think is the best duo in the league, which Amir Gibbs and David Montgomery. Jared Goff has proven time and time again, if they need to go through the air, he can do it that way. They've got receiving talent. The defense is stout. They can stop anybody. I do think it's interesting, though, Jacqueline, when we were talking about how they stack up against the Chiefs and B Mac, you alluded to a little bit. I'm a little like the team that I think could give them problems in the NFC is the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that I was ready to throw out with the garbage about a month ago. When things <laughs> I were think everyone was, yeah. Seeds, right? <laughs> but all of a sudden, they've turned a corner and Saquon Barkley is playing at this elite level, uh, MVP type level. That's the one team that I think could give them some problems in the NFC to get to the Super Bowl. But as far as like enthusiasm and the way this team is playing with so much confidence, and they are an extension of their head coach. Yep. He likes to talk big game, he likes to work hard. They've got his mentality and it is incredibly fun to watch and it's fun to even think about Detroit getting to a Super Bowl you know with the excitement we saw last year in the playoffs yeah. imagine if they were in the Super Bowl it'd be unbelievable do we get Eminem walking them out Ooh, why not uh, yeah absolutely <laughs> like we have to right yeah, at the Super Bowl 100%. at the Super Bowl if you make it I need him coming out of the tunnel in front of this blaring. team yes yeah. I mean it would be electric it'd be better than whatever the halftime show is sorry I already forget what it is uh Beyonce I don't, Kendrick, know. Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. don't do that to my girl but it is Lamar. <laughs> Oh my God! In order to get to the Super Bowl, the Lions need a healthy David Montgomery. He left that last game against the Colts with a shoulder injury. Was listed as questionable, but we never saw him return to the field. Uh, BMAC, you're on a short week here. Yeah. This is one of your top guys, but as you mentioned, Jameer Gibbs is there. How do you wrestle him saying, "Look, I, I think I'm good to go," versus in order to keep him a little bit careful? Well, today is Monday. He still has he has, he has a, a few days before actual game day to determine exactly what he can do. Hearing him verbally say. I should be okay to go that's a plus but then also if he's able to go will we see the uh, the David Montgomery that we've grown accustomed to seeing he's more of the physical bruiser of their duo of backs he's a guy that loves to lean on defenders will his style be adjusted at any point or will there be limitations because I feel I believe when you have a shoulder injury Sunday you're not going to be 100% by Thursday when you look at how physical the game has become, especially his style of play. So if he plays, Danny, I'm real interested to see 
Will there be any limitations in terms of the volume in which we've seen from David Montgomery, or will they make him more of a situational back, short yardage situations or goal line situations? I prefer goal line because here I have him on my fantasy team. <laughs> you a want playoff those run. touchdowns. Yeah, you want those touchdowns. I, I would prefer that. <laughs> this is where I think it gets interesting for Detroit is you have to consider the big picture here. Like what matters the most, a Thanksgiving game where you're a double-digit favorite against the Bears, or is it the ultimate goal of getting to that Super Bowl and winning it and how this could impact it? Because if he's not fully ready to go and you have conversations with the medical staff and they say it's just a pain tolerance or he's fine, but you can't hurt it worse, then I think, yeah, let him go. But if they say, you know what, if he takes one wrong hit, he could be out for three weeks or four weeks or it could be something that's the rest I can't, of the season. I can't handle you know, that. Exactly. <laughs> then you just shut it down and say, we're going to make for sure. for the sake of your fantasy. He's 100%. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He doesn't want it. You know what I would give him? You know the Bill Parcells test, right? What he would do to guys? Like if it was your shoulder and you were like, I'm good to go, he'd be like, are you sure about that? Oh. Like, and he would like test them to see their reaction. And if they were like, out, so yeah. they'd be like, nope, but if they were fine, they'd be like, all right, let it go. That's um, a good one. We're yeah. hoping he passes that test for your fantasy team. Uh, be mad. Good vibes coming your way. Let's talk about the Bears because, again, as alluded to, this was a team that had a lot of high hopes and expectations because it was the best situation for a rookie quarterback to yeah. be in in a long time. They've dropped five straight. Um, both of you guys, as former players, if you're dropping five straight here, what is the vibe in the locker room and how do you turn the corner, Danny, when you have a team like the Lions that you have to face on Thanksgiving? How do you get out of that slump? Uh, I don't, BMAC probably never experienced this playing an organization like the Steelers <laughs> where they were always really good. I was in a couple different organizations. I was with Atlanta, we were bad. In New York, we were bad for a couple of those seasons. It becomes really like hard to go to work. And I know people don't think of football as work, and it's not. And we're very lucky to be able to play it for a living. But it is. It's but your you, livelihood. Right. But you start going, you kind of dread going to work. It's like, oh, it's a long day. I got to punch in. I got to go pray. I got to get my game plan. That's like a disease that can come in. And when you start seeing these losses start to stack up, that's what I worry about. But I will say this. The one thing that would excite you is the chance to play on Thanksgiving in front of a national audience when you know a lot of people are watching, like the whole country is watching just your game, which isn't the normal, you know, normal situation when there's 80,000 games on and you can watch anyone you want. I think that's one. And then, you know, the one coaching message that I've seen, we've already seen changes made to the coaching staff, is you threaten guys with their jobs. Hey, you know, if you, that's just a harsh reality. And they'll tell you, hey, if you're not playing for your future here, you might be playing for your future somewhere else. So you better represent yourself and go put forth a good effort or else you may not be here. Like, that's the very harsh reality of being on a bad team that has lost that many games. They will put your job on the line and say, you got to go respond. And there lies leadership. Mm -hmm. You lean on leadership during, during difficult times. You lean on good coaching during difficult times. And I think that's what's missing from Chicago. Their season pretty much ended, I'm sorry, I gotta be blunt, bluntly honest here, when you guys lost the Hail Mary game. It's been a wrap since then. Mm -hmm. They haven't gotten over that Jaden Daniels completion. And because of that, they're in a slump. To your point, Jacqueline, we felt like this was the great best situation for a rookie quarterback to walk into because of the talent, right? But they have done everything outside of be productive and consistent because they don't have sound leadership. And leadership, Danny, it starts at the head coaching position. To your point, I never was in a significant losing slump. <laughs> Just rub it in, but rub it in. we did have a year, my rookie year, well, we lost three straight ball games, oh, that's right? Perfect. We lost in so many different ways, emotionally, physically, it was just, everything was deflated. But Coach Kyra, he found ways to motivate us week in and week out. That same three game losing streak we were in the midst of, we turned that into a Super Bowl run mm. because our head coach made us feel like we can move a mountain week in and week out. Even though we were losing in so many different fashions, he still had us believing. And then when we finally got our stride, caught our stride, there was no looking back. That's on Matt Eberflus because you've lost in a Hail Mary, Block field goal, you had one blocked yesterday to divisional teams as well, but you still have to find ways to motivate individuals. When you're a great head coach, it's not just about the X's and O's. You have to be able to lead a group of men, but also get those men to believe they're actually better than what they are. Because when they believe that, their actions will follow their mindset, and that's not what we're seeing right now. Boise State head coach Spencer Danielson, he talked to us a lot about that with his game. He goes, look, November is compete month, and they're tired, and I got to figure out a way to keep this team going into November, into the playoff. That is college. We're talking about NFL, though. Uh, let's put it... I, 
I want to try to put a positive spin yeah. on the Bears. Caleb Williams. I mean, 300 yards, two touchdowns, and yes, they lost to the Vikings, but it was a very close game. Is there room for optimism there? Yeah, with the quarterback, because we know he's overly talented. It's just been the issue of putting it all together. And when they fired the OC, over the last two weeks, Danny, we've seen more inspired play for Caleb. I love his ability to buy time when he's kind of playing street ball in the pocket because he has to, but he's also looking down the football field to hit the open pass catcher. There you have it there, making guys miss and looking to throw it, and he's throwing darts to opposing pass catchers, to his, to his pass catcher. So, yeah, you talked about being optimistic. You have to really feel good about what you've seen from Caleb over the last two weeks because of before yesterday's game, Danny, correct me if I'm wrong, he hadn't thrown a touchdown in four games. Mm -hmm. So he was in a slump. He got out of that slump and he's playing more inspired, confident football and hopefully that could lead to wins sooner than later. Absolutely, there's a reason for optimism. I don't think anybody's ready to jump, jump off the Caleb Williams bandwagon just yet. I mean, it's been an up and down season in a role, in a organization which has been the very definition of a roller coaster ride you're already having to deal with a coaching change which is not easy in the off season which you might have to go through again potentially we'll see how the season plays out but you can see the raw natural ability that's there you yep. see accuracy you see athleticism just some of those plays that we just showed in that game you've been seeing flashes of those what your goal is because now you've shown everybody I can make any play that's out there now you've got to get more consistent but they have to give him consistency around him in order for him to truly start developing but I think he's he's one where if I'm Detroit, you're watching the film, you're like, we better make sure we handle our business because he is more than capable of pulling off that upset. All right, fellas, you want to get an early lean on the game. I think when this line opened out, it was around three and a half. It's ballooned all the way to ten and a that, half. That bothers wow. me. Yeah. Uh, that B -Mac, bothers me. Where are you at on that this? That bothers me. That's a big number. Just the inflation. It is a big number. It's almost like they're begging all of us to do what? Take Chicago at the points. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a pain freak. I'm taking Chicago. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, All right. I, I don't know. I'm so undisciplined. I don't know. It's like I'm doing what they want me to do, and usually that's the wrong thing to do. But I'll tell you this much. Today is Monday. I still have two days, actually three days. So this is not a lock for you. It. We're not this, putting a lock. This is yet. early lean. Okay. That was the question, right? Early lean. Early yeah. lean. I'm true. leaning with Chicago getting the points because of the last two weeks, the Bears, they've lost. Mm -hmm. But they play competitive football. Yep. Block field goal attempt against the Green Bay Packers. And then we saw what happened yesterday against the Minnesota Vikings. The last two ball games they've covered. So this is a big spread, but this is a divisional matchup. And we're dealing with the Lions team that are dealing with some injuries on their side. The front level guys and some of the guys in the secondary. So maybe Caleb can do his Caleb thing and be able to cover. Because I don't believe they can win it. Anything can happen, but I'll take my, my money. I'll put my money on. The Bears getting 10 points, but this could change between now and Thursday, so stay tuned. Okay, disclaimer. I fear a lot of hesitation. <laughs> yeah. No hesitation here. What are you doing? Okay. The Bears. The 10 and the hook. I love that because you could lose by 10 and still win. But you know what I like even potentially a little bit better? Over. Because I think Detroit has been a machine offensively. I think they'll put up their points, even against Chicago. And then I see Caleb Williams at some point being able to get some points on the board. Even if it's late in the game, if they are trailing, they're going to keep chucking like around, yesterday. developing him. Yep. I think there's going to be points on the scoreboard. So my favorite play is the over, but I'll go ahead and snatch him up with uh, Chicago. Okay. okay, both going with Chicago. You can check it out on Thanksgiving Day on CBS. Uh, really quickly, as you look at the promo here, favorite Thanksgiving food? I'm a mac and cheese guy oh, seven days a week, answer. so okay. it doesn't matter. Mac and cheese, mac and is, cheese. is always my go-to. I'm and, with you. And some good I'm baked chicken. You, my Daddy. mom makes a mean uh, sweet potato with marshmallow casserole. Yeah, I love that's that. That's my favorite. I will say this. Turkey is the most overrated Thanksgiving food. Okay. Okay. No, it's not. I'm just going to go with gravy. I'd rather Can have. I pick gravy? You never yeah. order it any it's time of the it's year. It's fine. Gravy goes on everything. <laughs> say it again. The only <laughs> time you eat turkey is on Thanksgiving Day. If it's that good, we would eat it all the time. I agree. I'm so out on turkey. You don't eat turkey any other time, Amanda? Because it's not meat. good. We've had this promo for a long time. We'll <laughs> yes. discuss this later on. Enjoy the game.